everybody welcome back to my channel today we're going to do a diy dollar tree patriotic decor piece two of them actually plus a bonus we're going to use this home sign i know a lot of people haven't been able to find them but we're going to go ahead and craft from my stash and then i'm going to use this love sign they were both part of the same set with family um, i'm also for the bonus craft i'm going to use this small wreath form this is the eight inch wreath form and then this giant glittery mesh that i had gotten from walmart uh, on clearance a couple of years ago and then a couple of pipe cleaners. I'm also going to use a couple of embellishments on that wreath. Um, we're going to use that little sparkly unicorn as well as some glitter, glitter, glittery ribbon that I've got from Christmas time. Um, if you have not had the opportunity to, to make a project with these yet, I will tell you it's super fun. Um, you could do this love with the other love sign if you wanted to because I'm going to show you how we can stand it up regardless. Um, but for this love sign, we're going to go ahead and take it apart. If you're going to use the other love sign, you can just tape off the different sections. In my opinion, what I would do is I would paint the O white and the E white and then tape off the V and the L um, to be red. Um, but you could do red, white, and blue. I just thought how appropriate it would be for love to be just red and white, um, especially since it was pink and white. So I'm just for this one, I'm just painting the pink letters red. This is the um, Waverly Chalk Paint in Crimson. Um, what I'm doing is I don't want to have to paint over the edges. I don't want paint to pour over the edges because the other two letters are not painted around the edges. So if I do make a mistake and paint around the side of the letter, then I'll go ahead and have to paint the two white sides as well. So I'm trying to avoid that. And how I avoid that is I'm actually painting with very minimal amount of paint on my brush. You can actually see me go back several times just to get like a section. And I'm painting off of the edge. I'm using the foam brush and I'm brushing off the edge. Instead of going from the edge in, I'm making sure that I go off the edge. This way I don't drag a pool of paint at the edge. I do end up making a boo-boo on one of them and I'll show you how to fix it. Um, it's the O as a matter of fact. So for this sign, the O and the E, um, are going to be red. I'm going to leave the, uh, the two white letters white. But if you wanted to do like a, again, like a red, white, and blue thing, you could do uh, like a white L, red O, white V, and then you could do like a blue, or you could do blue. You know what you mean. You know how to do it. You guys can do it. Um, the only thing that I'm going to recommend is that we're going to paint the tongue depressor popsicle stick um, a coordinating color, but not the same color as the letter it's going to sit on. Okay. And now because I had the sign that said home and love, I kind of felt like I wanted to just sing the song in my head. Um, so I thought of how appropriate it would be to be home of the brave and land that I love. Um, and this way it would come off two different directions as well. So look really cute on the fireplace with their little popsicle stick signs hanging off the edge. Okay. And then we're just going to put one quick coat of paint on this I uh, really love this because the wood grain comes through even after the chalk paint is done. And I really like that about this. Okay. Now the other sign, which is home, has uh, a green letter and blue letters. A white, green, and blue letter. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, we're going to paint over the blue letters um and the green letter and we're going to leave the other two white again we're just trying to make this easy you could repaint this whole project obviously you could just do red white and blue the other thing that i wanted to tell you that i almost did but i really wanted to keep this a really simple project honest to god is i almost put like stripes on one of the red letters polka dots even little stars um, i think that that would be really cute as well I do have a sign that I bought at Big Lots about seven or eight years ago that actually has that, and I didn't want it to compete with it. Um, it says Freedom. I have it at, that I decorate with my home every year. Um, that one has, like, the letters are striped, like, a f the, the Freedom is striped red and white, and the F is blue, and I just think that would be too much competition. So um, I was really close to doing it though, I have to tell you. And because I wanted to take, kick it a little to the farmhouse side, I was actually thinking about possibly doing like the red ticking stripes, um, and possibly the polka dots on the, on the white, white polka dots on the red letters. 
Um, but I decided to just leave it plain, again, simple. But these are just ideas that you guys can do. I think that would be really sweet if you went ahead and you embellished the letters to be more like the patriotic decor. I think that with everything that's going on these times between um, the, you know, the world is going through so many changes, the nation is going through so many changes, it's wonderful to just embrace why we love this country and why we fight to live in this country. Um, we, we wouldn't fight for it if it wasn't something that we loved. We wouldn't want to see it de-evolve into something we don't love anymore. So no matter the climate, no matter what people are fighting about, I always feel like America is worth fighting for. And that's one of the reasons that I do celebrate all of these holidays and love my Americana decor all throughout the year. Um, it's also very country. It's also very, you can do primitive um, Americana decor. It kind of can fit into really anybody's style. You can always find something patriotic in your style, whatever your style is. So for the word home, I painted the blue E blue and I painted the, um, the green O red sort of like a light green it was not too bad um and I painted the h blue as well so I think it was a light blue h and a light blue e I left the m no I painted the m no it's the h no it's the m that's the h <laughs> if you guys could see what I'm looking at you would know why I don't know what I'm doing um no I painted the h blue white red o white m blue e yes that's it <laughs> but i like it because it's got the balance between the two signs so one sign is just red and white and one of the signs is the other sign is mostly blue with red and white um, but just to give you an option i wanted to show you too what they both look like so basically once we're done painting all the letters whatever spilled over the side i i wiped it off right away with a wipe and then once it's all dry, you can go back and you can sand um, just to get a nice unpainted color. Um, there was a couple of holidays. You want to make sure that you don't get, don't leave any holidays. Holidays, if you're new to my channel, is what my dad used to call um, when you would paint and you miss a spot. It looked like you were on vacation when you were painting that. So he would be like, you left a holiday. It's just, I don't know where it came from, but yeah. Um, so you see if I go over it, then all you have to do is you have to wash the edge and then you can sand it down. Now, if pay attention, because if you not pay attention, that's, that's rude. Like I'm saying, pay attention, but <laughs> pay attention to the fact that if you do spill over the paint over one of the edges and it's going to be covered by another letter, it probably isn't, you know, imperative. But if you do and it's going to show, then I would definitely take care of it. Or you could just paint the edges of all the letters. It's really entirely up to you. So now I'm painting um, popsicle sticks. I wanted to make them squared off. I painted one red and I painted one blue. Um, the red one is going to go on home and the blue one is going to go on love so that there's at least a little blue in the love red, white, and blue scheme. Um, I painted the edges, top and bottom and outsides. And I still made them longer. You can make them shorter. You can use a different piece of wood. You can use... I would, would would have been really cute is to use the even fatter kind of popsicle sticks from Walmart. But I didn't want to overpower the letters either. So the way that this turned out actually was kind of really cool. Um, and then for a marker, and I didn't talk about the marker, but for a marker, I'm just using the Dollar Tree came out with a new sort of white metallic paint marker. And it's kind of pretty cool. So that's what we're using to just uh, to just draw, you know, like write the words or whatever. Uh, you could always use your Cricut or print something out and trace it. Obviously, you know that. Hopefully, you know that. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. So now the important thing is just let it dry. This is the hardest part because you need patience. When you take these letters apart, they have nails in them. They have little breads in them, the, ones, the letters that go in the back. Um, you, I'm laying the breads on and I'm painting around them. I will tell you, don't use your favorite you know, sponge brush to do that because it could tear up your sponge brush. But, you know, if you use a, a bristle brush, it would be probably even better, okay? 
And now fast forward to the drying time being over. <laughs> and this is the easy, not so easy part. Because it's like a puzzle. So you have to decide, like, especially with the O, which two brads fit in which two holes and make sure that the brads that fit in the H might fit in the H, but make sure that the brads that fit in the M actually fit in the M and so on and so forth. If you guys know what I mean, okay? It is a little tricky, and when you pull the letters apart, I recommend you pull straight away from each other. If these get bent in either direction, sometimes it's really hard to fit them back in. We will glue them, and the worst case scenario is you can always just pull the little brads back out with a needle nose pliers or a pliers. But honestly, I feel like it gives it a lot more strength and stability when you can put them back together. So all I do is I turn them over, I line, their, I line their metals up, I turn them over, I start to squeeze them, and then right before I can squeeze them completely closed, I add some hot glue just for extra added security. Okay? And then I'm going to take two tumbling tower blocks. You can use those little cubes that they have. You can use really any scraps that you have that you want just to make a stand to help it stand a little bit. So I decided to glue them on the back of the E and the H. And... It does stick out the side of the H a tiny bit, but I went ahead and I used just blue paint to make it disappear. And now I'm writing Home of the Brave. So I'm putting the brave. And I'm just using this cute font. I just, it was a straight on letters. I spaced them out a little bit and then I just doubled up their uprights. Do you see that? And added little tails in the bottom of all the letters and then of the was just in regular penmanship. All right. Yeah, whenever you don't space something right, punctuation and little hearts always works out really well. <laughs> and now I'm going to add this to the bottom. I didn't want it to sit all the way on the bottom. I wanted to be able to like have it jut out in the middle. But if you want to put it on the bottom to help balance, you can. That's fine. You do you. That works for me. I just like to add a little extra security with the glue. And then we're going to add the Jenga blocks. And then we're going to go back and touch up the Jenga blocks. I'm sorry, we all call them Jenga blocks. Don't look for Jenga while you're at the Dollar Tree. It's called the Tumbling Tower Game. Okay? You can use whatever scrap, like I mentioned before, you can use whatever scrap you feel is, um, is going to be helpful. So when I do glue the Jenga box, I usually use my thumb or whatever, and I make sure that they're totally level with the bottom of the project. Um, and then I just glue them down really quickly. Um, it was hard to find a second place to put this Tumbling Tower block because... It was just a slightly bit longer than everything. It was slightly bit longer than the H. It was slightly bit longer than the O. It would be way too high because of the way the O curves. So I ended up putting it behind the widest part of the H um, on the bottom. And then I just went back in with a little blue paint and I touched up the parts of the Jenga block that you could see. Not a big deal. And as you can see, it stands perfectly perfect. And I love it on my fireplace. Oh my goodness. It goes so cute with my little farmhouse, little village that I have going on. I love it. Can't wait to do more projects. Uh, I didn't show you put together the love. It basically was the exact same way. Um, but I will show you putting on the Jenga blocks only because if you do this, then I want to show you that they fit really good behind the L and the V. You could also do the E if you want to. Um, Part of it was, too, that the L and the V are in the front letters. Um, so this gives more balance to the letters that are in the back. Okay? And then we're going to add this um, land that sticker, stick, sticker. And we're going to stick it off the edge of the L. I think that just looks really cute there, like a banner. All right? And just set it off to let it dry, and then that one's done. So I told you, fun and easy projects take little to no skill. I know a lot of people give me a hard time about my fancy skills. <laughs> so this is mesh that I got from Walmart's clearance. I got it at, uh, I think it was a dollar and change. I don't, I, I don't think it was very expensive, especially since how expensive this wide mesh is. And it was entirely covered in glitter which I would not buy it again. <laughs> but I wanted to just show you that you could cut large mesh in half. I just have my box utility cutter. I measured it. I figured out where half was. And I just rolled the mesh underneath the utility cutter until I got to the inner cardboard. And then I started cutting through the inner cardboard. 
Um, and then I was able to eventually just break it apart. Uh, make sure your X-Acto knife, utility knife are really, really sharp. That's a major importantes. And um, yeah, just keep going until you get through it. Now, if you're using mesh to do this, then obviously, you know, it might start to, you like, depending on the mesh, I don't know, it could, be, it could fray, it could whatever. Just keep that in mind when you're doing it. But you see, I like to do it while it's still in the package so it won't just come apart on me. At least it makes it that much easier. All right. Now, for this particular mesh, we're going to make one that we really haven't made before on our channel. Um, and I don't know that it's, I think, I feel like it's an inspired by the other kind of wreath, but I don't know that I've, the one when you scrunch it, I don't really know that I've ever seen anybody make that. I just know, like I've seen on Pinterest posts that people blog photographs of them doing it, but I've actually never seen anybody do it in a tutorial. Um, but I wanted to do is I wanted to cut these into squares. Originally, I was going to make like the little bunches where you kind of like bunch it up and you wrap the point of the or the edge of the of the bundle or whatever. But um, I was like, nope can't do it. Um, it was just too much work. So I'm going to cut these all into like little squares. As you can see how you make a square is you fold one corner up against the matching side or the actually the perpendicular side. And then you just cut up the short side that's left that's hanging over. And that's how you get a square. Yes, ma'am. And you're going to do this. I made... I feel like it was maybe 20, uh, I know I remembered, but now I forgot. I know that that sounds silly, but each bundle is going to be two pieces and there's, this wreath has three sections. I feel like, I feel like I might've made 12 bundles or 15 bundles. Um, but you know, just do whatever works for you. If you're going to put this on a big wreath or you're going to cut down big mesh to put on a big wreath, then you'll see that you can do it differently. But um, I just thought that this was really the best way. All right. Now I did mention in the beginning that we're going to use some glittery ribbon left from Christmas. When the Christmas glitter ribbon comes out, the one that's three quarters of an inch, um, it comes out in red, white, green, and blue. Uh, blue, of course, for the winter months and Hanukkah. But uh, whenever I see it, I always just see red, white, and blue. I mean, the green's great to grab for not only for Christmas, but for St. Patrick's Day. You know, glitter and St. Patrick's Day works too. But for me, it's just, I grab the red, white, and blue, and I kind of like feel like I stock up on it a little bit. We're going to make a very simple bow out of that too, okay? It is messy. I told you if I was going to, I had my druthers, I would not use this, glow, this glittery ribbon again. Um... And this is technically not mesh, but it is mesh. It's like the spidery mesh, not like the grid type meth mesh because it has to hold all of that glitter. Do you know what I mean? So we're going to use some pipe cleaners. I'm going to take three pipe cleaners and I'm going to cut them in thirds or four pipe cleaners and cut them in thirds. Um, I just measure the first one and use the first one to cut the rest. I find that to be the easiest, but you know, you do you boo. Okay. Now we're going to start assembling. Um, how we're going to make our little bundle is I want to show you, I'm going to lay two, a piece flat, two pieces, one at a time. Oh, this is me showing you that the other technique probably won't work with this glittery ribbon. Um, as I was pinching it, the glitter was falling off. And all I can imagine was if I wrap the wire around it, will the glitter fall off and then the wire will come off of it. Do you know what I mean? Like I almost felt like the glitter was going to hold the wire. What I did end up doing is taking two squares. I folded the one up in the middle, like pinched along the middle to make almost like a bow, like a bow tie bow. And then I did that with two pieces. I crisscrossed them to make almost like a cross. And then I took pipe cleaners and went diagonally across both pieces and pinched them together. And when it's done, it almost makes like a flower, like a ruffle flower. And I feel like that's the thing that I kind of have seen. I don't know exactly, like I said, I apologize. I've seen it in things, but I don't know if exactly I'm doing what everybody else does. Um, and I'm only using the one mesh. The reason I'm only using the one mesh is this is an eight inch wreath. It would be like wicked busy looking if it had multiple colored meshes. As it is, I think it looks, you know, just busy enough with the unicorn and <laughs> the glittery ribbon bow. Okay. So we're just going to repeat this for all of them. Nothing fancy. You've seen me bundle stuff before. 
Now, if you're new to my channel and you haven't seen me bundle stuff before, I will tell you that um, if I make like the rolled ribbon wreath method um, and this one as well, I try to keep the um, the two pipe cleaners that are left over in the back going in one direction, like opposite directions actually, technically, but in a straight line. And what I do that for is that it does help it tie on to the wreath. It does help you get the wires around the wreath and really twist it tight. Okay. Once I have all my bundles done, and again, depending on how many bundles, depending on what size wreath you have and what size mesh you have and stuff, I'm contemplating keeping this glitter. I will tell you, it's a lot of glitter. And I'm not even done cleaning it up yet. I really think I'm going to have to do that. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to show you really quick how if you tie it just on one wire, it kind of will flop around and flip around. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take that two wires, open them up and hug two wires of this wreath form. So for example, the first one we put on is gonna be on the outside wreath and the middle wreath. The second one is, I mean wire, not wreath. The outside wire and the inside wire, um, the middle wire, excuse me. And then the bottom one is gonna be the inside wire and the middle wire and so on and so forth, okay? And you're gonna tie on all of them when you're done. Um, if you haven't been able to find the unicorn, which is super cute, they do have other items. I have red, white, and blue stars. One star would be really cute, especially a white one. It would really pop on this wreath. Um, but I love that unicorn. I feel like he's so sparkly and festive. His little tail, he's so American. It's fairly, really like, you know, it's really, really too much. He's too cute. Um, so we're going to use him and we're going to use pipe cleaners and that's all. We're not going to glue anything on this and we can always take this apart if it doesn't suit us for one day. So this is how we're going to go ahead and um, I'll just show you up close. This small wreath only has three wires that make it up. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that we, like I said, we're going to put one on the middle, on the inside wire and the middle wire. And then we're going to put the next one on the middle wire and the outside wire. And we're going to switch back and forth. And that's just going to help the wreath get fuller faster. Now flowers would look really cute on this wreath since it really is. This almost emulates like a background. So flowers would be really cute on it as well, honestly. Those cute little bandanas, the red and white ones that they have. Maybe a scarf wrapped around like a flag. That would be so cute. Okay. So then we're going to go ahead and... Um, Fast forward for our little unicorn guy. He's so cute. So as I finish up, again, I feel like I'm a broken record. Um, if you guys decide to make any of these, especially this like cute little bonus wreath or anything like it, please let's share it with me on social media. I love to get permission to share projects that others make with me. Um, you can tag me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, I'm even on Snapchat if you want to send me a message there. Or you can email me or Facebook message me um, your project. My email address is uh, miss, looks like mrsgarthb2 at gmail.com. And it's in the description box down below with links to all of my social medias. Okay. So now you can see these three ribbons that I got here. I just wrapped a few times around my hand um, and then got a piece of wire ready. Um, didn't do any clipping or anything. This isn't wire edged ribbon. But the thing that makes this ribbon or this bow cute is that we use a lot of loops and then it makes it nice and full. Okay. Now, originally I had wrapped it around a, uh, a center pole of like a mesh wreath at, just to get like even amounts. Like I wrapped each one seven times, but then it, that was too bunched up for me. And I was like, let me just wrap it around my hands. The way I like to do like this with the three colors is I don't want to wrap them all on top of each other. I like to be able to like wrap them almost next to each other so that I can fluff them out and not have them compete with each other as much. Okay. So the, um, if you can't find, oh, the other color was silver. <laughs> it was red, white, blue, silver, and green. And if you can't find the silver, I was just going to say they did have it in a sparkle white. I'm silly. Um, but I just love the silver. I think it's very fun, very farmhouse to go with the red and the blue. Now, I mentioned before that this is just supposed to be a fun bow. You can do it one color, all colors, whatever um, your little heart desires. But I do love how 
all of the ends were kind of hanging out. It really reminded me of something that was homemade. Plus, I don't know, it's just really farmhouse and fun to have things look old and aged. Okay. The piece of pipe cleaner I have is the glittery kind from Christmas. I think you can sometimes find that on clearance after Christmas, and it would totally be worth it to snatch it up if you're a wreath maker. Because um, really, you don't really see the mesh anyway. I mean, the, the, the pipe cleaner anyway. Okay. And now I'm just twisting in the middle and I'm separating all of the ribbon so that none of them are bunched on top of each other. I'm trying to pull them out into different directions. This is really thin ribbon, so it's a little bit more difficult than your average bear. All right. And once I have it the way I like it and I can cut the ends off um, in the fashion that I like, either dog eared or dovetailed or flat cut, whatever you want to do. All right. And then make sure that the pipe cleaner that you put this on, you put it on around the middle of the pipe cleaner so you have both edges left to tie onto your wreath. And then we're just going to find a fun spot to tie it on. And then when we were getting ready to wrap it up, I said, you know what? That unicorn would be so adorable on this wreath because he's so sparkly. And we were like, let's make that happen. So once we stopped fiddling with this bow and we finally got it into place and just fluffed it up and fluffed it around, I like how it does stand out a little bit, but it also likes to feature the, um, the, the mesh that's underneath. I really like that. I really like that a lot. Stop playing with it already, Jerry. Jeez. Come on. It looks good. Stop. <laughs> Now we're going to go ahead and add the unicorn. So I wanted to show you, originally I was thinking if I hooked the uh, pipe cleaner around, it would come back out, but it's just too unpredictable back there. So what I ended up doing was I took the pipe cleaner, I went straight up his side. I went in straight in the bottom, straight out the top, and it was perfect. Um, you could tie him the other way. You could make the pipe cleaner go across his body. Um, or you could like do like around his neck. Any way you can do to get him onto the wreath is fine with me. But I just went and I fed him straight through uh, from the bottom, straight up to the top, and, um, and then pinched it off. So um, if you didn't, can't find this guy and you find something similar, you can go ahead and just add it to um, you know, any caged little uh, glittery item and tie it on. This would also look cute with that really, um, the hanging signs that I hold after I made this project. <laughs> But they will look really cute with the little signs that say like home of the brave and stuff because those are glittery as well. And then that's it. Tie it on, tie it off. You can put a hanger if you want to or not. It's up to you. And I just love it. He's super cute. Um, it was quick and easy. All of these projects were. Hopefully you guys try them. If you do, give this video a thumbs up. If you like it, I should say. If you haven't yet, click subscribe and when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And don't forget to share this with friends and family. This would be a great project to share with the chillins or the seniors um, if you could find these pieces or just find wooden letters in a store. Okay? And as always, you guys take care. God bless, and we'll see you next time. God bless America. Bye.